My name is Thor Matheson. I'm an employment law attorney with Zywave. Zywave provides software-based solutions to insurance brokers in order to help them support risk managers, HR professionals, and C-suite executives looking to navigate today's complex legal and regulatory environment. Specifically, I focus on creating user-friendly resources to help organizations understand the nuances of employment law. In this video, we will explore the underlying costs contributing to your workers' compensation premiums and share strategies to help your firm reduce total workers' compensation expenses. I will begin today by briefly discussing the United States workers' compensation system. We will then move on to discuss the experience rating process, which is commonly used to determine your workers' compensation premium. By understanding the experience rating process and its product, the experience modification factor, your firm can begin to analyze the drivers behind your workers' compensation costs. To finish today, I will share some basic strategies any firm can use to help reduce their workers' compensation premiums. Each year, workers in the United States sustain approximately 3.1 million injuries in the workplace. That's 3.5 injuries for every 100 workers. It is estimated that those injuries cost the U.S. economy $170 billion each calendar year. Employees injured in the workplace, or as a result of work-related activities, are legally entitled to have their medical expenses paid by their employer. Additionally, they are entitled to a certain percentage of their lost wages should the injury be severe enough to cause the employee to miss work. Workers' compensation laws can vary widely from state to state. However, almost all states require employees to carry at least some form of workers' compensation insurance for their employees. Workers' compensation is a system of no-fault insurance that limits the liability of the employer to statutorily defined maximums. At the same time, employees are allowed to receive benefits regardless of whether or not they contributed to the accident. Most employees are covered under state workers' compensation systems, but a small number of employees, such as postmen, and longshoremen are covered under the federal system. Workers' compensation is an exclusive remedy, meaning employees cannot sue their employer while receiving benefits for an injury. In some rare cases, courts have allowed litigation in cases of willful intent or bad faith. It's important to note that employers who fail to acquire workers' compensation insurance will be liable under traditional tort law, as well as face stiff penalties for foregoing the coverage. In most states, an employer's workers' compensation premium is calculated through a complex actuarial process called the experience rating process. Essentially, the experience rating process uses the payroll size and loss history of a company as compared to the industry within which it operates to determine its workers' compensation premium. The result of this actuarial analysis is called the experience modification factor, herein referred to as the MOD. 34 states and the District of Columbia use a uniform experience rating system in order to determine an employer's workers' compensation premium. This equation is provided by the National Council on Compensation Insurance. The states seen above in orange have independent ratings bureaus. However, for our purposes, the principles discussed today apply nationally with the exception of Washington, Wyoming, North Dakota, Ohio, Pennsylvania, New Jersey, and Delaware. The mod factor calculation compares a company's actuarial losses to its expected losses. Actual losses are the number of claims your company reports in an experience period. The experience period is generally three consecutive policy periods, not including the most recent year. So, for example, your 2012 mod will use data from 2008, 2009, and 2010. Expected losses are determined based upon the amount of payroll your company pays annually as well as the type of work your employees do. As you would expect, coal miners have a higher expected loss than office workers. Expected and actual losses are additionally split into primary and excess loss portions. Primary losses are a measure of frequency. Excess losses are a measure of severity. Primary losses are the first $5,000 of each loss, except in California, where they are the first $7,000 of a loss. This is known as the split point. In 2013, most states will be increasing the split point to $10,000, and further increases to bring the split point into line with the claim inflation 
have already been announced for subsequent years. Any amount over the split point is allocated to excess losses. In most states, if a claim is medical only, meaning that it did not involve any time away from work, it is reduced by 70% for purposes of the MOD calculation. This encourages employers to get injured employees back to work quickly, even if duty is modified. Let's explore an example. Your company has two claims on the books, one for $3,000 and another for $20,000. In considering these claims, the former would be a primary only claim of $3,000. The latter, your $20,000 claim, would represent $5,000 in primary losses and $15,000 in excess losses. This is because only the first $5,000 of each claim constitutes a primary loss. However, if your $20,000 claim involved only medical expenses, not wage replacement benefits, you would receive an adjustment during the mod calculation process. So, instead of $5,000 in primary losses and $15,000 in excess losses, you would be charged with $1,500 in primary losses and $4,500 in excess losses, 30% of the original cost. Again, Medical-only adjustments do not apply to every state, so check with your broker to determine if this premium saving adjustment applies to your firm. There are other factors that may affect an employer's MOD, but are generally out of the control of the employer. Expected loss rates, discount ratios, and ballast and weighting values vary by state, year, and payroll. In California, credibility factors serve a similar purpose to ballast and weighting values. While you cannot control these values, it is still important that you know that they exist and affect your mod. 1.0 is an exactly average mod, but is far from perfect. The best way to think of a mod value of 1.0 is to consider a grade of C. It is not the worst grade possible, but certainly shows room for improvement. Your minimum mod depends on your industry, size, and state, but could be as low as 0 0.8, 0 0.7, or lower. Achieving a minimum mod or a loss-free rating, as it is sometimes known, is only possible when a firm completely avoids claims during their experience period. Any mod below 1.0 is referred to as a credit mod. A credit mod ensures you pay less premium than the average firm in your industry. Conversely, a debit mod is a mod above 1.0. As you would expect, firms with debit mods are paying more than the average firm in their industry. What does this mean? Let's explore an example. Say your firm has a mod of 1.0, and this year you've been assessed $100,000 in workers' compensation premiums. A mod of 1.0 means your firm is about average, but there's room for improvement. Using the experience rating formula to derive your minimum achievable mod, you discover that lossless years would have resulted in a mod rating of 0.78. If you had, in fact, achieved a mod of 0.78 instead of 1.0, you would be paying $78,000 in yearly premiums, as opposed to the $100,000 you pay today, that's a 22% savings or $22,000 in additional profit for your firm. While a large number of severe losses is detrimental to your mod, frequency generally weighs upon mod more heavily than severity. The underlying theory behind the mod formula is that frequency, or how many claims occur in an experience period, is a better predictor of future claims than the total cost of claims. Total cost is unpredictable and can vary greatly for each accident. Applying this theory, reducing the frequency of your claims moving forward is the best way to reduce the likelihood of having a severe claim. The easiest way to reduce frequent workers' compensation claims and reduce your mod is through the institution of a quality safety program. Safety programs help identify issues employees are seeing on a daily basis, as well as communicate safe work practices across your organization. Employee education and proactive supervisor communication can help reduce risk. It is also important to analyze what's causing your frequent claims. Are slips, trips, and falls causing 75% of your claims? Evaluate your site's flooring, lighting, and employee footwear. Communicate about the importance of good housekeeping and notification of potential problems to supervisors. Back injuries eating up hundreds of man hours? Making sure workplace processes and equipment are ergonomically friendly can be a great cost savings measure. Draw upon the expertise of your broker and your insurance carrier to help strategize the best practice for reducing frequent claims. 
Encouraging employees to report injuries quickly and to report near misses helps to contain costs after claims happen and stay compliant with workers' compensation procedures. Ensuring your supervisors know how to respond to accidents and how to get injured employees the help they need is vital. The faster injured employees are treated, the faster they can come back to work, even with modified duty. Finally, return to work programs are critical in terms of the employee's psychological well-being during recovery, as well as the company's bottom line cost savings. Your broker has the resources to develop return to work programs, build safety programs, educate your employees on safe work practices, and more. Being proactive in addressing your mod will allow you to achieve significant cost savings over time. Thank you for your time. I hope you have found this presentation informative.